Hey, what's up, guys? Um, wanted to hop on here. I'll do a little market review of the day right here. I just wanted to show you some trades I took with, uh, again, this this is a demo account, paper trading. These, the account is different from the account that we've been doing the live streams on, but I just kind of wanted to show some trades that I took, and I'm going to go over these a um, little later in the video, you know, as we get to them when I do the market recap. But something I just want to say early on here is to, again, be careful on, you know, who you're following trading wise. I started this channel with the intention of being super transparent. Um, and, you know, the account that we were doing the live streams on. So this is a different account. This is the account that we were doing the live streams on. So, you know, we're still in that drawdown, but I just kind of want to show you how easy it is for people to, you know, kind of, I don't know if spoofs the right word, but just kind of have a YouTube account and, you know, talk about trading and show themselves up and, when it's it's not really there um i'm super transparent with you guys again so like this account's in drawdown and every now and then i go through the account history so you guys can really see um you know nothing's changed but if we go to this account you'll notice how see all my executions they they, they disappear once you change the accounts and especially if you're following anyone that's doing paper trading you can name these accounts anything you want you can delete them you can reset them um, this account right here, this demo too, uh, this is, you know, I just started this up aside from this demo account because I want this one that we're doing the live streams on, I want it to be, you know, unadulterated, untouched, and I don't want to be taking trades on it that aren't live streamed. Um, so I have this one, you know, for days like today when I kind of want to toy around. Um, you know, I've been saying in the market forecasts that were in some low probability conditions. Again, that's why I'm, I'm demo trading here. Um, so fake money. But even if you look at this account history here, you know, we were up $1,500 and I, this demo too, I think was made down here 10 to. Um, so I never really touched it. If you, this was October 2nd. So if you can, if you want to see, there's not many trades that were taken on it up until today, right here, 12:13, and then you know I opened the account, uh, took a few trades, but we ended, you know, we we went down a little under 100k, but we ended up ending the day up uh, 1500, and you know this is a little more emblematic of how I actually trade. Um, you know, where you can partial out. So, you know, we enter here, enter three here, enter one right here, and then we kind of partial out. Whereas in the YouTube channel or in the live streamed account, I'm, I'm really trying to stick to that, you know, one contract, 10, five handles on ES rule. And then another thing is, you know, I'm taking these trades and I want, I want that I want those live stream trades and the majority of this account to be silver bullet because um, I think that's the first entry area that a lot of people are getting into for ICT. So as you can see, this isn't really silver bullet. Um, it's This was the last 30 minutes of close after the FLMC release. And yeah, so it's a, a little out of the scope of what I've been doing on this channel, but I just kind of want to show it to you guys and explain to you, you know, if people aren't showing you their statements and you're not tuning in like every day to see, to look at their statements, be a little weary. Don't, you know, and I be a little weary in the sense of like, you know, not everybody, like people can be faking it. Um, don't get down on yourself. I'm kind of saying this because we've been in such rough market conditions. Don't get down on yourself because there are people out here and I've been kind of, you know, as I've started this YouTube channel, I've been looking at other people on YouTube and, you know, they don't even show their entries or executions. I watched this one guy who's just like, I'm entering now. And, you know, you don't even see what he's doing. You can't even tell. So it's, it's really easy to highlight when you get it right and when you get it wrong. 
Um, or if you like see somebody that's like posting on Twitter or like hindsight things on YouTube, um, that's, that's nothing special either. See, I can do that. You know, like I can take a trade on any account and, you know, reset it, doctor it, and then kind of talk about it after the fact that's not, don't trust those people. Um, you know, that's why I'm saving this other account and that is specifically for everything is live everything is recorded you see me trade you see me you know break it down enter the trade and exit the trade but all this like hindsight showing trades is very easy to do um you know you don't know how many trades they took throughout the other day like here's another trade i took today um, this one's even better. It was a little market maker sell model. It sold up here five. I did three, two, and then we distributed down here. I'm, I'll go over that um, a little when we get into the market review or the daily recap section of this. But again, just be wary of people who show you stuff in hindsight and who aren't showing you their receipts every single day. You know, people have multiple accounts. I have multiple accounts. I have accounts that I haven't even showed on here, you know, think or swim accounts. Um, so it's very easy to kind of make multiple accounts in the same broker or multiple brokers and then kind of only show certain things. Again, remember, these are rough conditions. So don't believe everything you see. I'm just kind of saying this to help you filter out who you follow in this space. Um, only, you know, demand a lot. I think ICT said it make only really, really listen to people like really like people who you're like, I'm going to listen to what and like study from them. People that are showing you live executions. Um, yeah, because you don't know how many they've they lost in between the that one back tested or that one that they just started to record on. Okay, so let's get into the day the market review. Start off on the dollar again. So I was a little wrong. I wasn't expecting. I thought we were gonna. I thought I was expecting higher dollar. Um, I called that on the the weekly forecast. Again, I'm not sold until we close below this low but i was expecting more of a wick to form on this weekly candle on today wednesday off the cpi news i was thinking you know we we, we still came down and we're tapping into this order block if you look let's measure out this wick we still closed above consequent encroachment of it but I was hoping for a little, I was hoping for this candle to close a lot higher. So we didn't get that going into the end of the week. Um, I'm unless tomorrow is a huge up close day that just erases this. I'm expecting lower, probably, you know, expecting us to take this low. So I'll kind of, I'll talk about the indices and the chart pattern that I expected to happen on here on the dollar. I was expecting something more like this and I was expecting, you know, a real big wick and it would kind of be forecasting, you know, a wick with a candle body close and one of these premium rays or discount arrays and then to send it higher. So since we didn't get that, I will be expecting more of something like this unless tomorrow just completely erases this candle. So if the dollar is going to take this low and close below it and continue lower, you know, the indices, I think NASDAQ already kind of peaked above its all time high and ES was really close to it, but I think they'll start to make all new all-time highs and continue into that run if this dollar starts closing below here and dropping. So interesting week again. I won't be really getting seriously into trading until mid-January again, but you know I'm still watching these markets. But again, harder conditions. Um, we are in the 
March contract for the indices, future indices. But if you'll notice, you might see some people that are using the continuous contract. And why that is, is because we're currently at levels that the these March contracts just don't go that far back. Um, we, there's not data that far back. So when you use the continuous contract on trading view, if you do do that, what it does is it will automatically use the front running contract. So it will use the March contract, I believe um, that data. And if you notice on the continuous contracts, both ES and NQ, we have this gap right here. So what this gap is, is it's kind of when the contract, when the continuous contract switches over to the next contract. I don't know what really, at least in trading view, um, I don't know what makes how that it determines when that is. Um, I know it was around these two days where the volume kind of did the swap where the March futures contract started taking in more volume. But what you'll see is if you, I'm not going to do it right now, but if the, the December contract is still trading. So if you go and look at where the December contract, the number, like where we are on the right side, if you look at where we are in December versus March, the numbers will be off um, a decent amount. So since the numbers are off when the continuous contract switches from one to the other, it turns into this gap. The way I would handle this gap technically is I would just trade. I would not even consider it really. Me personally, I wouldn't consider it because most of the time I'm trading the, the monthly contract. So I would just technically use this March delivery for ES and NASDAQ. And whenever I want to go and kind of map out, you know, higher levels that are like way over here, you know, this is July, 2021. Um, I'll be looking at the, the March, but when, if we do pull back, say hypothetically we pull back in, in our eye in this area, I would just look at the March contract and base my technicals off of that. Okay. So let's kind of get into what's happened on the week so far in terms of NASDAQ, as you can see, we came up and we just placed a new all time high for NASDAQ. You can see we came up above this high. So when you see these two green lines, when I scrub to the right, we have this high and this high and we broke above those today. So those were the upside targets. But what I was really expecting was a little more volatility at a CPI and for us to wick above them and then kind of close a lot lower. Um, get down to the hourly and I'll kind of show you what I was expecting. I was expecting something like this. So Monday, the Monday. It's not Monday. Okay, here we got the days. So Monday open, come up, came down on Tuesday. And I was really hoping for like a, a wick up here and then a, cl a strong close. And then the close of Wednesday into Thursday was gonna come down. I was kind of planning for something a little like that and how that would look. Let me see if I can pull up the, the um, market maker manipulation templates that in the core content. I was thinking of something kind of like this. So as you can see, you know, we come down, place a low of the week on a Tuesday, come up, place the high of a week on a Wednesday and continue lower. So again, you see this low right here on a Tuesday. I was planning for something a little like that. 
Wednesday high. It could have even been this high. And then a strong close. This still can happen, but with how strongly we closed and how uh, weak the dollar closed, I'm going to just kind of sit back and wait on that. Again, if it's going to happen, it's going to be tomorrow. And we're going to either see this completely erased and like by 930 or we're going up. If we kind of move sideways overnight, I think we're still going up. And what could end up happening is, let me pull up another picture for you. And what's really happening is this. We're getting just a classic, classic Tuesday low of the week, which makes a lot of sense. Um, I think it can still happen, especially if the dollar starts closing below that really significant low that I talked about. So Tuesday low, and we're just going to continue up through Wednesday, Thursday. In terms of the more lower time frames and what happened specifically today, I'm going to go to the th three chart view. Okay, let's talk about it. We opened today, and if you, I believe ICT posted this morning. Um, yeah, he posted this morning and kind of talked about how. You know, he got it wrong, ended up switching and uh, ending in profit. But we opened from the London in this tight range. See up here in the 15 minute, we had this tight range. And you can see we had 830 news. Let me go over there on the one minute as well. We had the 830 news where we came up and ran that buy side so we have this range right here and we run the buy side and now ict tried to go short here um, thinking we we're going to run that sell side i thought i was watching this and i was actually waiting for that too so it was validated to see you know he was targeting the same liquidity we ended up he ended up getting stopped out here ran a little higher and then when it broke down i think he ended up re-entering and um, was able to you know target these equal lows right here and he kind of got it and then that was enough sell side remember it doesn't really have to come all the way down here that was enough sell side this run below these and at the 9 30 open we ran up went higher again remember we have these buy a lot of buy side levels a lot of very very significant higher time frame liquidity levels that are way, way to the left. So there's a lot, a lot of liquidity because these are very higher time, time frame levels that haven't been touched in a very long time. So there's a lot of liquidity sitting above those. So it makes sense that all it has to do is run these sell stops and then that permits it to go higher. We had the run up here and we retraced down, came down below that low. In terms of the models we trade on this channel, you could say that this right here was a 2022 model that would have been um, fit our model for an entry. So what do we do? We came up, we ran a very significant we ran significant highs on the 15 minute and the five minute. We had the shift in structure. No, I guess we didn't have the shift in structure, but uh, maybe the shift in structure was on ES. Anyways, enter here on fair value gap, came down, took out that low. And then kind of came sideways here into the 10 o'clock hour. And there wasn't much in terms of a silver bullet, as you can see. I'm trying to look for one. See, it's, it's, you could have, again, you could have like entered on there, 
but I think this would have been a very cherry picked. Um, that's something that I probably wouldn't have entered on. I wouldn't have been trying to go short after taking this low here. I would have probably been targeting longs, if anything. And then we came up back into this fair value gap, broke lower. You can see here I had a little sell. Again, this is all on this demo from this morning came up entered into here sold again came back down and then when it came back down here um, what I was really trying to do is I was trying to exit at break even because I noticed it started to find support on this fair value gap and I really wasn't expecting it to come back up into here and I just thought it would have been better to exit that. So as you can see, the first entry was at 27.75. Then I bought up here, or I sold up here higher. And then I sold all two at 16.630.75. So it was about a break even trade. Um, and then it ended up coming up a little higher, dropping down. And again, notice how this all happened in the 1050 to 1110 macro. So we had this run up to kind of knock out some sell stops and then we displaced lower for the macro time. And then we came into the 11 o'clock hour, continued lower. I believe I wasn't looking at the charts here, but what you'll notice is what all of this really was, was coming down into a discount. So we have this, if you look in the four hour, after yesterday, we have this big fair value gap. So what's fair value gaps inside that? We have all these other fair value gaps inside that. And then we just drop down into this one hour. As you can see, it melted pretty slowly. And then right at the two o'clock hour. So let's look on the five minute here. We came down, we're melting, we're melting, taking out sell side here, came down, taking out sell side, all that London sell side. We're in a discount and what hasn't been run in a really long time. All this buy side, we have a high here, we have a high here. Buy side hasn't been run since 1045. And we just melt down into this discount array and then at two, we have the launch off of the Fed funds rate. They didn't change anything about the rate. And we just came up finally that on the Fed funds rate, we came up, see this green line. That's that high on the daily from way back 2021, took that high, came back down and then eventually came up here and took that all time high for NASDAQ, this green line right, right up here. You can see we kind of continued around it. Drop down lower into the three o'clock hour. Where are those executions? came back back down to the three o'clock hour they must be on the was it yes ah oh, here they are on yes came back down oh let me go over that market maker cell model yeah so into this 1050 macro we had this market maker sell model, which was here on ES, and it wasn't really that clear on NASDAQ. We had it on NASDAQ, but it, I think what really signaled me was this kind of box of price action here helped me identify it a little bit better. So we have the original accumulation, then we have first stage accumulation, then we have second stage reaccumulation come up 
smart money reversal right here, right in the 1150 macro time. Then we broke lower, shift in market structure here. You can see I entered three off of this fair value gap right there. Then we came down lower, came back up. I entered two more here. And then this was the first stage distribution. Came down, came up, came down. I was looking at this as the second stage redistribution. 1150 macro. So this this was a while. I was sitting in this price action for an hour. Then what I was really looking at during this time was I saw this kind of sweep of these equal highs. It lined up with this whole left side of the curve when we shifted market structure lower. And what really got got for me was the time it happened and it happened in this macro time. So I was like, okay, time and price. We have smart money reversal. It seems like we are shifting to the sell side of the curve at a significant time. I entered here, still in that macro range. We ended up coming back up here, but that was completely permissible. Um, and this was a very tight range, so I ended up having my stop up th up here. I think the stop, it was a very small stop. It was about a three handle stop. So I was fine with having it up here because I knew if it came up here, the idea would be completely negated. So, but we broke lower, second trade distribution. And there was really nothing in between these entries and this 1150 macro that I saw as a red flag. I think it was playing out as um, with structure wise as any market maker cell model should. You know, we came down here and us coming up into this inefficiency, I thought perfectly valid. It's a very, it was a lot larger of an inefficiency. We came up, our candle bodies respected the consequent encroachment of this fair value gap. So I was like, okay, where when it broke lower, I was like, it seems price is respecting the sell program. We came down, shifted market structure, came up. I was really just watching these highs. As long as we didn't get above these highs, I wasn't worried. We came down, shifted market structure again, created this fair value gap as we shifted market structure. Then we kind of hovered here. All the candle bodies were still respecting this fair value gap. So coming into 1050, I was like, I, I haven't seen anything between the 11 and 11, 10, 11, 50 that made me think that, you know, price wasn't behaving in any way that I thought I'm off sides. So coming into 1150, I was like, I need to hold it. 1150 macro should deliver. And it came delivered here below these lows. I really just had it below this candle low right here because this seemed like a, you know, this candle down here was an order block and it took out liquidity. And I was in the trade for a while and I was getting impatient. Um, so it was a decent amount of handles. So I took profit there. I recorded this whole thing so I can post it if need be. Um, but again, you know, I'm just, it doesn't, doesn't matter if you're just recording things and then posting it in hindsight. But I came down, partial out here. And then I remember I was in the trade for a while and I wanted to get out. So I moved my stop right above the, um, the last up close candle, which was this one. And it ended up getting stopped out again, right at here. We were at the top of the original accumulation, which is, you know, the, is the target below it is kind of the best case scenario. So I had, I did have a limit order below it, but then I was a little impatient after being in the trade for over an hour. So I just moved my stop to this candles high and it tagged me out, but then continued to deliver as you can see. And we, then we just melted in over the lunch hour into those discount arrays that are also on ES, as you can see. We have those hourly fair value gaps inside of the four hour. So here we have this four hour. And we have these two hourlies. I don't think we even came into that second one. But again, these were also really good downside targets see how they lined up with the mid to bottom of this original accumulation 
So that was another thing that gave me confidence in this market maker sell model because you can kind of see it on the five minute um, or just on the higher time frame, we had a like discount PD arrays and I knew we had these higher time frame objectives that I was expecting CPI to target. So, you know, prior to CPI in the morning, um, I saw this market maker sell model and that's what gave me, you know, these discount arrays kind of trading down. So if I was expecting CPI to run up and run all those higher time frame daily highs, but it coincides with my narrative that it would want price would want to drop down into these discount arrays prior to running for that to knock out sell side liquidity, generate buy side liquidity. So it's buy side liquidity here. So generate, drop down to the discount, generate buy side, and then run against it for the, um, I, I think I said CPI, the uh, Fed funds rate announcement. So again, um, that was kind of the idea behind this market maker sell model. And then after it delivered to that original accumulation, so just kind of, you know, give you an idea. Um, after that, going into this lunch hour i really just wasn't thinking of anything um i was just like we delivered to an objective between this lunch and two i really don't care what happens i'll watch what happens but um and kind of you know use these significant levels but i wasn't really interested in any type of trade because remember time and price lunch 12 to like 1 30 isn't really great trading time but these macro times are so waited cpi happened um i think i gave you that little description we you know ran these higher time frame daily highs okay yeah we're on the we're on the continuous oh let's go to the weekly yeah so you can see we came up and ran these buy side came up coming up into these up close candles up here then you can see I made this mistake of you know trying to think we're going short or we were dropping because remember I told you about how I thought that Wednesday was going to be that high for the reversal weekly um, so I entered short here but ended up getting stopped out right here um, So when we got stopped out here, no, sorry, sorry, stopped out here. I was gonna say, yeah, I paused for, cause that seemed wrong. Had the stop loss right here, got stopped out. So we entered one, one, one up here, hoping to see this act as an order block, but then it didn't, we broke above it, hit the stop, exited all three. And then I said, okay, was offsides, let's reverse, you know, that was kind of, Bad on me to try and pick a top. We came back down. Entered three on here. As you can see, let me take this off. Five minute for value gap. So we have this five minute for value gap here. But then look, there's really not much of an inefficiency. We have these little volume balances, but I was more interested in the fair value gap entry model. So I identified this one minute right here inside of this five minute, entered three right there, came up. This entry right here of one, I had a limit order right at the top of that because I'm expecting these two down close candles to be a change in the state of delivery or an order block to send price higher. So I had a limit at the top of there because when we break above this, it's finally validating this as the order block and we should see prices go higher. It's also relative equal highs. So we, we broke above it. And then I also got the tail end of this trade on recording um i don't think i'm going to post it just because 
I don't know if there'll be much of a benefit in kind of watching it versus me just telling in hindsight. Again, I kind of opened this video up talking about don't really believe anybody that just kind of, even if they post the, tr the recording of them in the trade from start to finish, still don't trust that because you don't know how many trades they took before they got it right. So again, I'm probably won't just, I probably won't post that recording unless somebody wants me to, but I have it. Um, and yeah, and then we partialed out one, two, three. It's really targeting this high right here, but uh, we were getting close to the close when you know you get price like this. So I just kind of partialed my way out and looks like we didn't get it. Um, but yeah, it is interesting to see, you know, have this account up 1500 in one day while the our other account that I've been you know doing purely silver bullets off of is in quite a bit of drawdown but it kind of goes to show you know this is more of my trading style um, whereas you know I'm kind of at my computer away from my computer you know I'm only really there when I see something and it has been kind of a struggle to force myself to record myself in the silver bullet windows because when it's not there I find myself trading and then I have we've been doing rules where just one contract for that silver bullet and that also doesn't allow me to kind of partial my way out when we are wrong so you can see we you're able to capture more of a move so when you are right you don't have to be right again it's the whole thing where you can be right less than 50% of the time if your RR, you know, is greater than two to one. So when you enter with multiple contracts, when I, and I am right, I'm able to partial out. Um, I haven't been doing that on the silver bullet live stream content. Uh, that was just kind of an idea I had from the beginning. And it seems like it's kind of biting me back in the butt. Um, as you can see, we got just about 15 handles on ES, whereas on the other account, I usually go for five on one contract and then leave it there. So again, might have to reconsider that rule. Um, we'll see how January, how price behaves in January. I thought that I could kind of deliver a hit rate that was high enough where, you know, it, this didn't become a factor, but that turned out not to be the case. My apologies. Um, but I think, you know, again, October was a great month. Um, I will be doing the recap for September. September was a bad month. Um, I still want to deliver that to you guys for the transparency sake and kind of so we can look back on it in hindsight. You know, once we get like January and February in the books, you will be able to kind of, I'll be able to speak on, you know, bigger picture. Um, and you guys will be able to kind of visually see that too when I do do those recaps. But again, um, for the live streamed content and the demo account that we're doing for the live channel, we are getting kind of bit in the butt by not trading more than one contract and allowing, you know, runners. Anyway, uh, thanks for tuning in. For the rest of the week on the indices, I'm a little all over the place here. For the rest of the week on the indices, I... Yes, so NASDAQ has come up and taken that high, that all-time high. Yes, I'll be watching these the levels of this wick. Again, remember the two charts I showed you. Um, this classic Tuesday low of the week. I'm wondering if we're going to kind of place that in um, and go continue higher. Or I also showed you that Wednesday reversal. I'll be watching that again. Uh, I won't be live streaming it. Um, I think the conditions are still kind of rough in this holiday time. Come January, I'll start more regularly live streaming again. Uh, but again, be careful, guys. I think you know some of the videos that ICT has posted this past week or two has kind of shown that you really, really, really need to know what you're doing because at certain times you know price isn't delivering 
super cleanly in this holiday um, period and with this kind of climate of, you know, news and economic, you know, everyone was waiting for the, the rate announcement. Um, yeah. Yeah.